everyone. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video, I want to show you how I make fabric from the selvage leftover edges of material. Let's get started. Welcome to Pieces of the Past. My name is Deborah. I have a passion for fiber arts and creating new things from old. Join me on my journey as I explore the endless possibilities, the tools, and the techniques to create new pieces of the past. To start this, I want to show you uh, what you can make and what you can make from that. We're going to be making fabric, ba basically pieces of fabric from the selvage edges that you have cut off of your other fabric when you used it. So it looks like this. I tend to make mine in, in the same color way. So like there's a green and a beige and a black and pink and blue. Okay, that's what it looks like. And this is what you can make from it. You can use it to make you can make a whole shirt if you wanted to, but I use it for little things like this to make these fish blocks in this quilt. And I used it to make this bag, which is really awesome. And this is just all leftover selvage edges. And this is what the selvage looks like. Now, the selvage edges, I'll tell you this, are bound on one end, one edge. So they don't unravel. That's the beauty of this technique. And they usually contain the name of the, of the fabric somewhere and the uh, color dots. So those are all the colors that are used. Here's, an, here's a really good example. These are all the colors that are used in this fabric. Okay, so this is really cool with the, with the dots and the, and the um, brand of the fabric that you use, that kind of thing. So you can highlight those in your fabric. See, I have the color dots here and here and the wording down here at the bottom. So what you will need to make this is you need some selvage, obviously. This is just a small sampling of my selvage. Um, I save pretty much all the fabric. So this is my selvage bucket, one of them. So if you're not familiar with the selvage edge on, a, on, a, on fabric, this is basically a bolt of fabric that you would see in the um, fabric store. And the selvage is, is down here at the bottom. And it shows the name and of course the color dots are on here. There's only two on this one because there's only two colors in this fabric. But this is made in a way, it's woven in such a way that it won't unravel. So that's why uh, it's at the, at the bottom here. So this is what you would cut off as you're cutting to make other things and you just throw it in a bucket. And then when you have enough, you make your own fabric out of that. Okay, so what we will need is we need the selvage. You're gonna need some base fabric. You're gonna need muslin is, is really recommended. But, so like this is muslin, okay? And it's good, it's, it's good to use. It's real thin and, and it's a neutral color so it won't show through some of your lighter, your lighter selvages. Um, but I like to use fabrics that maybe they were folded up for too long on the on the little bolts and they got dusty or whatever um, this one happens to be a pink dot that i don't think i'll ever ever use and the back of it happens to be a a, a nice whiter color so this is going to be perfect for a foundation you can also use paper very thin paper newsprint or in this case phone book paper if you happen to have phone book paper it's great for this for this project. And the last thing you can use is adding machine tape. Adding machine tape happens to be two and a quarter inches wide, which is the size that I use for binding my quilts. For the binding, I make it two and a quarter inch wide. This was actually made with the uh, adding machine tape. See how wide? So basically, 
to bind the quilt, you would use it as just like you would normal binding for the quilt. It's very colorful, very nice. They're the exact width you need to do the binding on a quilt. So that is, I will show you that technique when we get to sewing. Okay, so now how to sew it together. This is the muslin. I'm not going to use this one today because it's pretty big. Um, I'm going to use this other scrap piece, which I actually cut the selvage off to use later. <laughs> so anyway, this is what I'm using. And the way you do this is you take your selvages and you find a piece that you like to start with. Um, you know what? Let's just start with the cherries. Why not? You find a piece that you like and you see how long you need it. I need it to be about that long. So where did my scissors go? Here they are. And you just cut it off. Okay, and you're going to need two pieces of selvage to start with. You need the one that's going to go face up on your background like that, on your back, on your foundation material. And then you're going to need the next color that you want to put on top of that. So let's go with a uh, white. Here we go. Okay. So you can either try to get them very straight or you can do them in, at an angle. It doesn't matter. Okay. We're going to be sewing this one on top of this one. All right. Now this one is the, the cherries are kind of showing through that. So I think I'm going to go with a different color. Um, let's do blue. Why not? All right, and I could use, I could use these here, but there's dots there and there's dots there. So I don't really want to do that. I want to save those dots for later. So we'll sew this one on top of here. So it needs to be just a little bit bigger than your background. Okay, so that's our two strips we're going to start with. Now you can do one of two things, well, or three. You can either hold this and just stitch it down to where it's attached to the foundation to work with. You can use double-sided tape, which is what I'm going to do. Um, or you can just put the other uh, scrap on there and just sew it. Uh, either any of those three ways will work. So I just take a piece of double-sided tape and stick it on here just to hold it in place. Just that first strip and I get this where I want it on here. You don't have to sew the bottom part down because it's selvage. It's not going to unravel. Okay. So that one's kind of stuck in place, so it's not going to move. You take the next strip and you lay it across here over on top of the edge that's cut. That's going to ravel. Okay. And we're going to stick that there. And we're going to take it over to the machine just like this. No pinning or anything really. And we're going to set the machine to stitch where we want to stitch. Now, I want to leave this white because it's kind of fuzzy. I want to leave it uh, loose. So I'm going to stitch, I'm going to try to stitch between the white and the blue line here. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Regular stitch length. Keeping this straight. Now, you have to be careful because when you're just holding it, sometimes it'll move like this or it'll, it'll drift off this way and that'll make your fabric all wonky. So if you really think you need to, you can pin it down instead of just holding it. That's up to you. Okay, so what we've done is we have stitched down this strip, this blue one, and we have basically encased the edges of the red strip, the red and white strip, underneath. So it will not come unraveled now. So then we go back to our selvage selection and we pick something else. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's do, yeah. Let's do butterflies. Okay. 
and this one actually the uh, fabric design goes all the way to the selvage edge so that's kind of pretty we'll cut that off right there and we'll stitch it down and you see how well, I was holding it so it kind of curved a little bit so but that's no big deal you just want to make sure that you're stitching on top of the previous one that's it that's all there is to this so I'll do this one and then I'll show you the tape real quick also on the uh, on your thread choice I'm using white here you can use any kind of neutral color or you can use a monofilament that is basically invisible that's your choice do whatever you like but that's basically it that's how you make it you go all the way to the end by doing that same thing with the strips the strips vary they can be wide they can be extremely narrow it doesn't matter um, no um, as long as they fit the width now that one doesn't fit the width so I wouldn't use this one on this I'd probably use it on a, a piece of paper smaller um, but if I need blocks for a quilt that are only this big, then I only need to make a little bit bigger than that uh, selvage fabric for those blocks. So you'd make your fabric like this, and then you'd put your pattern pieces on top and cut them out. That's how I did the bag. The paper is super simple. You don't tear it. You just keep it in a, in a roll. And that's what the short strips are great for. And in this case, I would stitch this first one down. Where'd my petal go? There it is. All right. These are super fast and they make great binding. So let's see. Ooh, skull and crossbones. Yeah, let's do that. There we go lay it on there and it doesn't matter if they're crooked or not unless you just really want them straight and you just keep going just like that now you want to avoid the urge to um like right here the selvage is white and then you've got your pretty purple you don't want to cut this off because then it just it will ravel this selvage very very edge is what you want because that's holding it all together um so yeah put that on there we'll put him on here so he's peeking out from behind there so there you go that's how you do that now when you get your pieces on here then you would lay it upside down on your cutting table on your cutting mat and you would cut right alongside the edges of the tape that makes it nice and square and then you can pull the pull the paper off and it's all done you would do the same thing with the foam book paper uh, same technique now the fish quilt that I showed you before I'll show you again uh, we are going to have uh, the, basically the pattern pieces I'll, I'll, I'll have the measurements for these squares so that in kind of a little tutorial on how to make the um, the fish blocks for this quilt and I'll open it up so you can see it so isn't that cute Woo! Isn't that adorable so and it uses up all those salvage pieces uh, what I've showed you here today Everything can be found, the, the uh, information on the products that I used and how to do the selvage uh, fabric is going to be on our post, on our, on our website. So do check that out. The link is below in, in the description and the link to the links to all the products and where you can uh, get in contact with us, that kind of thing. They're all down there in the description. So I hope you will leave a comment. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it and uh, do subscribe please it, it really helps the channel um, until next time i would love to see what you make with your selvage fabric see you later